So where do we start? <laughs> Maybe before we jump into how it now is crooked and like this, taken half apart. Maybe I should talk a little bit about the rationale behind the uh, design and stuff. So the way it is designed is pretty much completely out of linear actuators, which is a little bit unusual for a robotic arm since traditionally, at least from what I've seen, uh, most commonly people just use just stepper motors on each joint and then just do it like that. Um, I decided to use linear actuator because firstly, I can produce more torque from like weaker motors and secondly, because the inspiration for this design was actually from Lego sets that my grandparents bought me when I was a kid and that one was an excavator and that one had a lot of linear actuators on it and I just wanted to make something like that because I thought it looks really cool and it does with all the joints sticking out and stuff. It looks very it looks very antique, very old looking. Now when I designed and built this thing it was really for my mass iron. Uh, the mass iron is like the mass internal assessment for the IB in, uh, international baccalaureate diploma thing. Yes that one basically for high school for finishing year 12 and so it was designed to be built very quickly without anything that's too complicated but it still ended up taking quite a while to be honest nevertheless apart from that goal in mind the other aim for this robotic arm was to actually help me in filming like holding a camera and you know doing Tony Stark stuff yes when I watch Iron Man and see his robotic arm, that, that was very very cool. So I always wanted one like that to be honest. Now, why did I use step motors for the robotic arm? Well, I wanted it to have functions similar to a CNC. So it will be a, like accurate as a CNC. But obviously that's impossible because the error carries forward. But that doesn't really matter because I think using stepper motors was a huge, huge mistake to be honest. Because to use stepper motors effectively, you really need the stepper motors to be overpowered for that type of application. Otherwise the stepper motors just starts to skip steps and it just stops working. In addition, uh, stepper motors work best like high torque, low speed applications. But since I'm using linear actuators, and that one is already really slow, you really need the motor to run uh, quite fast to have like sufficient speed for it to be moving. And so that's why using separate motors was probably not the best idea. Some of you very clever viewers would notice the separate motors are like way underpowered. <laughs> when I tested it at the end, so day after I stayed up all night trying to get it working, I uh, ended up just taking apart the polluter shield and then just using individual motor controllers for each motor to simplify the process of testing it and I realized at that moment he fucked up the separate motors were way underpowered and um, it, it just wasn't moving as much as I wanted to and the separate motors were skipping steps <laughs> so yes I have to change all of that now since the robotic arm wasn't moving effectively how on earth did I actually finish it for my mass eye? Well, I did finish my mass eye, otherwise I probably wouldn't be standing here. I would be at school doing year 13. <laughs> well, I managed to get some data in, like measure, like get it moving and stuff by myself effectively assisting it to kind of just helping it to lift it up while the motor was running to like reduce the load. And that was how I got it to move and kind of like get it to the points that I wanted to and then do the forward kinematics, inverse kinematics, measure all that crap and write it in. Although in the last video I said that the due date was in two days but because half my classmates haven't even started by that time so the teacher had to give us an extension for the due date and so that's how I finished it on time. Now, moving on to the new plan that I have in stock for, I guess, finishing the robotic arm. To overcome the problem with insufficient power in the motors, I have bought actual linear actuators that are rated to lift 900 newtons. 
the problem is I don't do physics, I only did bio during during high school. So all of this is very new to me and you'll see me mess up many bit physics concepts along the way. Um, and also I got very, very powerful um, little, what's it called? Oh, I can't remember. Tuoji? That's Chinese. Oh yes, S servo motors. Smart servo motors. I got smart servo motors for the very end end effector. So the one that spins the hand and stuff. Because that one needs to be a little bit more accurate than the rest. And I've also got a huge power supply. Okay, actually, it's not very huge when I come to think of it. It's 24 volts, 20 amps. It's like, okay, I suppose. And that one is to power all of it, or almost all of it. The Arduino would get a 12 volt one. So I have two, I will have two power supplies for this robotic arm. I don't know how that would work, to be honest. Maybe I just like need two plugs to plug, plug it in and hopefully nothing goes wrong. I don't, I don't really know how that one would work out to be honest. And also, to, for the um, Z axis, the spinny one, this way, when I tested it last time, I realised that if I'm going to put any weight on here, that Z axis is going to have the most amount of force applied to it and so I need the most powerful motor than that. And I tried to find something, a, a DC motor that might be powerful enough for it and I found that that was very very expensive even though I bought all the parts from China it was still very expensive and later on I realised hey, why not just buy a very cheap drill this one costs... how much did it cost? 200 yuan 40 Australian dollars for a very very cheap drill it's 24 volts too and so that works perfectly with the power supply and so I'll just take it apart and use the motor inside because a drill, as I found out, um, is actually very, very powerful. It has more torque than most DC motor, mo motors that you can find online because it's, it's very geared up. Because the drill has very high speeds and just in case it doesn't have enough torque, I also got a, um, a worm gear, very huge one. It was much bigger than I anticipated when I looked at it on the pictures. And so this one should hopefully reduce the speed and also add additional torque to it. Hopefully nothing goes wrong. I've heard some horror, horror stories with using these worm gears. Like, uh, it's stripping and stuff. But hopefully it doesn't happen. Oh yes, yeah, so also, I bought a new soldering machine for it. So I no longer need to use the hot glue gun anymore. Which is fantastic. <laughs> Uh, and about time too, I want a solder machine for ages now. Now, where did I get all that money from? Well, remember the elephant? Yes. I actually won some pretty heavy prices with it. And so I managed to get, and, and so I used all of that money for the elephants onto the robotic arm. The next question that leads from that is, is this even worth it, spending so much money on it when I could just actually just buy one from the market for probably half the price? Actually, no, I think it costs maybe four digits. Anyway, why not just buy one with all that money that I've already spent on it? Well, this really is a very good learning opportunity for me to kind of explore electronics for the first time on my own. And I generally just wanted to build one myself, to be honest, and be able to customize it, I suppose. Because I have so, so many crazy ideas for this once I get it to working on a basic level. I think with all that talking, I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from for this robotic arm. And so let's get started.